Welcome back to the Convo Couch, everyone. Pasta Jardula here, Johnny Sue on those ones and twos. And as you know, 
We've been down in Maricopa County following this audit. We've been following this audit for a long time. Very exciting to this crew over here as election integrity activists to get an actual, a real audit, not one of those what we like to call over here Fugazi audits. But if we're going to talk about Fugazi audits and real audits, we got to bring in a real guy, somebody who's going to know what's up, somebody who's been fighting on the Senate floor, well, maybe through via Zoom now with the coronavirus going on, but we want answers. So we got out there and we went out and we found you somebody who's going to give you the real answers. My new paisan is here, State Senator, Arizona State Senator, Sonny Borelli. How you doing today, my friend? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Man, uh, I'm so glad that you're here. I've been seeing a lot of the, the work you've been doing, pushing for this audit uh, and how important it is. And you can't imagine how it is to be a leftist of sorts like ourselves and before a real audit and to say this election had a lot of uh, a lot of things that we have to relook uh, it's been hard for us but it's not going to stop us we're going to keep pushing forward uh, we went to arizona we were able to talk to representative fincham the other day uh, we're good friends with john brakey of course uncle ron we got to meet him go on his show uh, it's been exciting it's been crazy uh, it's been awesome but i have a lot of questions uh, that I was hoping that you could answer for me. Sure, far away. All right, so you were on the floor, obviously. Uh, you were one of the ones who were very vocal uh, in the Senate for this audit. But, you know, and I watched every single hearing. Uh, it's crazy. Every single hearing in Georgia, <laughs> you know, Michigan, Wisconsin, and especially the one in the uh, Arizona, one of the first ones, too, as well. What was the biggest piece of evidence for you, Senator, to say, hey, we need an audit here? Well, the, the testimony coming in from the cyber type of people, you know, it's not really, I look at it, it's not really who wins or loses the election. My concern is if it's hooked to the internet, which it's not, uh, that means possibly hacking, foreign interference, and that's a national security issue. And that's something I will not compromise on. Uh, you know, it's one thing to do a hand count and, and recount that kind of thing. But if you're finding out that it's hooked up to the internet and you have devices that are hackable, and if there was internet traffic on that, that's a national security issue, and that I can't back off of, and that's something that I stayed strong on and kept pushing. When we had that joint hearing in basically downtown Phoenix on November 30th, that lit the grass fire when it actually helped me to convince some of my Senate members that we need to do a, a we need to do a have a hearing in the Senate. And then, of course, President Fan says, "Well, you got to get the support for me if we're going to do that." So we got the support. We did a hearing through the Judiciary Committee. And through the uh, testimony of the county supervisors and their election of uh, election uh, department people, uh, they just, you know, said too many things that uh, which confirmed my suspicion. And that's why we the Senate president issued the uh, allow the subpoena to be issued to subpoena uh, the board of supervisors for the election equipment and all the ballots and so on and so forth. And yeah. then the fighting started, you know, so that's that's how it goes. Yeah, we've been watching this whole fighting situation back and forth, and you get one guy who flips, and then everybody's going crazy, and the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors is saying one thing, uh, you know, the Senate's saying another, and it, it really was, uh, it, it was great. I think it also kind of shined a light on what is a state issue versus what the county has the right to do, uh, and I'm glad that you guys pushed through because this is going to show a lot of other states that their legislation uh, has the right to have these audits and to have checks and ballots, uh, balances within their election system. Were you into election integrity before this, or was this something like, bam, it hit you in the face and I got to get up to speed with our elections? Well, you know, we're, we're all pretty kind of not good, but well-versed, if, or if not good-versed on a lot of the election uh, manuals and stuff like that goes on. But I mean, most of the things that I concentrated on was veteran issues, public safety issues, you know, our core core principles of government when we need to do infrastructure, so on and so forth. There's a lot of other members that are more experts on that in that field. However, uh, when it, we're talking about national security thing, I'm, I retired from the Marine Corps. I did 22 years in the Marine Corps. So you know where my, uh, my roots are going to come from in that angle. And that's where I'm going to push. And, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, you move on from there and you start learning more and more and more. And the more you peel back the onion on this selection with the Board of Supervisors, and by the way, all of those, all that authority is enshrined in the U.S. Constitution and our state constitution. That is the legislature that controls and, and sets the policy and procedures, the time and place and dates and all that stuff for, for elections. Not the judicial branch, not the executive branch. It's enshrined in the Constitution. A lot of people don't understand this. This is one of the things that when the Constitution, the U.S. Constitution was ratified, 
this is a state's rights issue that was retained by this by the by the legislate by the states it wasn't granted by the federal government this was retained by the states that we will control the elections yeah. so we don't have one centralized uh system yeah. now that's what they're trying to push with the hr1 HR yeah i was going to say you're going to have a big, big pushback with this coming on here that's going to come into play right now it's going to be states versus federal government what can they do and in fact uh i believe that uh Joe Biden's out there trying to have a couple czars when it comes to elections to push for mail-in balloting uh, as the primary source of voting. And, and that just scares the crap out of me because being an election integrity activist, I know why it's been banned in other countries. And if we don't have the proper securities when it comes to our absentee and mail-in ballots, watch out. I mean, I think it should be OK for uh, active servicemen and whatnot, you know what I'm saying? People who have really serious handicaps. Uh, but that's also going to lead back into another point because you're talking 2016, uh, Senator Borelli. Um, I remember I was out in Arizona for the Democratic primary and they shut down almost 70 percent of the polling places. And you had long, long, ridiculous lines. And then the next thing you know, come around, they convinced a lot of Democrats and even some Republicans and independents to say, hey, listen, the, the, the system of vo in, in person voting is bad. We got to go to mail-in voting. Uh, how can you, uh, even though you're not a Democrat, you're obviously a Republican, but if the Democrats break the system, how can you fix that and make sure that we're going to go back to in-person voting? Right. You just hit on a very important point. That was the setup. That was the setup in 16. <clears throat> that was a complete setup. Those long lines were for the, uh, the presidential preference, um, basically the presidential preference uh, uh, election. And the Maricopa County supervisors actually cut the, uh, the elections department budget and cost them to reduce the amount of polling places. So yeah. they're the ones that actually that caused that uh, bottleneck, if you will. Well, one thing in Arizona, the independents can vote in the primaries, but that was a presidential preference and it created those long lines. But when you cut the budget of the elections department that they have to reduce the amount of polling places, that was the setup. Yeah, you know, every, you know, I always tell everybody, if you're at that poker table more than 15 minutes, you can't figure out who the mark is. You're, you're the mark. <laughs> so, you know, you got to you got to start thinking. And I kept I kept blowing the whistle back then. We're being set up here, folks. We're being set up. This is not right. Yeah. And of course, uh, they blamed Karen Purcell for that was was the recorder at the time. She had been there for 20 years or, you know, uh, she handled everything right. But but when they cut her cut their budget to, to limit the amount of polling places, that, that set the uh, states to do push for all mail-in ballots. Well, we don't do all mail-in ballots. We have the permanent early voting list. I don't know why they called it permanent years ago, because nothing's permanent. Uh, but we're trying to clean up that uh, that process, too. If you, you know, there's a bill that's going through now. If you haven't voted in the last four uh, election cycles, um, four years, even in municipal elections, if you haven't voted at all, you're going to get a notice from the county. And if you don't respond, you're going to get another notice you know, and you're going to get another notice. So you have 90 days to respond. If you don't respond, it's either you're either dead, you moved, or you're a phantom voter. Yeah. So these are the kind of things that we need to we need to clean up on the rules. Now, the Democrats are calling that voter suppression. Yeah. But how is it your voter suppression? Well, you're just you're just not going to get a mail in ballot. You can still vote. You're not kicked off the voter rolls. So once again, that's another deflection and distortion and distraction uh, by the Democrats. And I use a lot of D words because that's what the D's represent. Yeah, Democrats. I mean, uh, wow. I, and I, I like the way you kind of compare it to poker because on this show, I talk about it all the time. Uh, the reason why I have picked up elections so well is because I'm a, a, a poker player for a long time. So I look at every single aspect and see it coming. And you're right. That's what they did. They broke the system. That's when you saw it coming. They tipped their hat. Even in federal in the in the federal legislation, when they tried to pass the Heroes Act, that to me sound the alarm. When they were trying to get rid of all identifications on absentee ballots and mail-in ballots, I was like, "Uh oh, watch out for the mail-ins." Um, right. But let's talk about right now because you had a lot of uh, the audit itself, and we'll kind of circle our way back, uh, Senator. You had a a chance to be involved with picking out the contractors and whatnot. Why did you decide to go with Cyber Ninjas as one of the contractors here? Well, actually, I was not involved in that process. President San Senator President Karen Fan did that, um, and of course, our, our lawyers and uh, and I believe the Judiciary Chairman um, they they pick. Look, if you open up the phone book, you're not going to find in the in the phone book in the yellow pages election audit team. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so, but this team is basically made up of. Uh, um, I'll, I'll use a, a a fast food analogy. One person does French fries, another one does apple pies, another one does fish fillet, and another one does hamburgers. 
Yep. Okay. Everybody's got an expertise. Cyber Ninjas is basically the quarterback for the whole process. So, you know, we wanted to make sure that this was a good, full forensic audit, not that BOS uh, or BS that was the, the BOS the Board of Supervisors did. They did not do an audit. Yeah. They, they had a company come in that was supposedly certified by the Election uh, Accuracy Commission. The EAC, well, yeah. The EAC, but guess what? Uh, the EAC, those machines were never even certified for the last couple of elections. So even the Board of Supervisors allowed machines to be uh, to be used that were not even certified by the EAC. So they bring in these two companies to do a so-called audit uh, <laughs> that's approved by the EAC. Well, the EAC does not approve companies to do audits. They approve a company to come in and, and basically certify that the uh, that the machine operates properly. In other words, your uh, your 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 cable guy comes out, and he sets up your system, your entertainment system, your DVR, and all that stuff. And he's just going to hand you the remote and says, I certify that this remote control works on all this stuff. Yep. That's it. That's all they did. It's not an audit. Yeah. It's not an audit whatsoever. That's uh, they can call it an audit, but you can call it a, you can call it a ham sandwich. We all know it's baloney. <laughs> They're out there perpetrating that, uh, that garbage and the lamestream media is picking up on this stuff. that was an audit. It's yeah. a complete lie. Yeah. And now we find out that uh, through our process, of, of we want to examine the machines, the Dominion machines, or whatever whatever company that these machines are made out of, made from, or company, whatever, that uh, uh, we, we need to examine them. And that's part of our subpoena, along with the routers. And uh, of course, they we wanted to do everything there in place at the county uh, tabulation center. But they chose to say no, even though our, our subpoenas had delivered to the, the state senate address, we said, wait a minute, time out. They were going to load all the ballots on a truck and just drop them on our doorstep. When the judge ruled in our favor that our subpoenas are legal and enforceable, then they decided, well, we'll comply. We'll just drop off these ballots, 2.1 million ballots on your doorstep. Whoa, whoa, wait, time out. Let's do this smart. Karen Fan, the president of the Senate, says, wait a minute, don't do that. Take them out of the truck, put them back in the vault. Let's just do the inspection of the machines. They're in place, intact, the same way that they did their, uh, their so-called inspection yeah. where yeah. nothing has changed and we'll bring out one pallet at a time of ballots and we'll do it that way yeah. well they chose to push it off site okay so which means they disconnected all the machines they disconnected all the routers key point remember that they disconnected all the routers boxed them up but then when we found when we were going through our process we said wait a minute where's the routers yeah oh well oh yeah we got to give them to you they're all boxed up we had to replace all the routers for this inspection. So they disconnected the routers, replaced the routers, got them boxed up, but now they're balking on giving us the routers. Yeah, yeah. And then we're asking, well, wait a minute. Okay, we need the passwords for uh, the passwords for these machines so we can f complete our uh, so we can complete our inspection. Well, it turns out Maricopa County does not have the passwords to these machines. Yeah. yeah. Wait a minute, wait. You don't have the passwords for these machines? Well, then, then obviously when you did your so-called audit, you didn't have the passwords to actually prove or disprove that any of this equipment is hooked up to the internet. So once again, an another bovine excrement lie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so once you get, you know, like I said, a ham sandwich or, or it's bologna. But it's bologna. Right. <laughs> it's a fugazi. It's yeah, a... exactly. <laughs> this is nothing more than a complete lie. And they keep, they keep saying that we're doing the big lie, the big lie. Well, what they're per 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 perpetuating is a big lie. Yeah. Because they didn't do an audit. That's a lie. Uh, they don't have the passwords so therefore they cannot they cannot uh, say 100 percent accuracy these things are not hooked up to the internet and they, they all they, they claim it was not hooked up to the internet uh we and you know, we're here we're, we're trying to say look you say this is a perfect election let us help you prove it yeah yeah prove that this thing was you know fair and you and we'll, we'll exonerate you guys because everybody's beating you up and we'll just help exonerate you and we'll prove that this election was done pure fairly no no shenanigans whatsoever but they're they're fighting that tooth and nail because they don't want us to find out the truth. Even the local media, the local reporters are, are out there perpetuating another lie. Um, they're saying that, you know, what, what our audit is going to expose how you voted in the election. Well, that's what they're saying. And even the secretary of state, Katie Hobbs, is saying the same thing, that we're going to expose how an individual voted and identify that individual. Wow. Okay. Well, based on that, and then I guess these reporters are scared to death 
that we're going to find out that they actually voted for Donald Trump and they might get fired. <laughs> <laughs> it's so crazy because a lot of this stuff, like I have this, these questions right now in my folder because, as you know, we were down there and I did speak to Ken Bennett. I put a tweet up because uh, I asked him. He talked about those secondary passwords. And, and first off, I just want to reiterate the fact that uh, Senator Sonny Borelli said there is no such thing as an audit. They tell people that there's audits, their logic and accuracy test from the same two companies that actually certify the machines, and they haven't even certified the machines here in Arizona. That's a conflict of interest. It's not a real audit. We know this from California. And in fact, we supposedly in Los Angeles, we get a 1% audit. And it's, it's really fugazi because they let you do the audit part first and then match them up with their results after supposed to be done the other way around. And in Maricopa, you had less than 0.04% of an audit of the ballots counted. So you guys really don't have audits. And I think it's important because nationally, nationally, people have to understand in their states, <clears throat> we don't have real audits. What Arizona is attempting to do in Maricopa is have a real audit. But digressing back to that, you want? did you want to say something on that, Senator? Well, you're, you're right. And of course, uh, you know, the... Uh... Uh, the accuracy rate, or, or what's the right word? I'm, I'm losing it. Uh, um, the error rate. Usually, that error rate is about one percent. Well, on the adjudicated ballots, it's usually about one percent. We're we're finding out that there's an adjudication rate of eleven percent. Exactly. Yeah. That that's outrageous. That's yeah. outrageous. Yeah. And number one, there's no way you can marry up the envelope with the ballot that was separated over six months ago. So there's no way to prove that. So yeah. it, once again, people are, are they're lying to everybody. And you're right. It was a it was a logic and accuracy test. And by the way, you mean to tell me like once again? Oh, by the way, most of those people did work to, for Dominion at one time, and now they're working for these companies that go out and they do the certification of equipment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you know, now you got the fox watching the hen house. But once again, if they're their so called inspection that they did, you mean those inspectors didn't were not able to use didn't have the passwords to get in there to to make sure that these things were not hooked up to the internet, if any any kind of Wi-Fi, Bluetooth connection, any yeah. of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Did they check their routers? And base, and now also, we now they've got the county's uh, sheriff chiming in. Yeah. On issue. <laughs> this is another thing. And this is what's, wait a minute, they're saying that they can't give us the routers because there's sensitive data that on there that may, may be linked to law enforcement. Well, wait a minute. Why is law enforcement even linked to any kind of routers that are in the elections department? Number one, number two, that's that's garbage. This is there's not going to be any data on there like a hard drive. It's basically just going to be have little signatures of of, uh, of air traffic. Yeah. In other words, back in the day, remember we, before we all went to cell phones. Back in the day, when you got your telephone bill, you had a list of all the phone numbers you called and the date and time. That's all. That's that's the only kind of data that's going to be on that router. Yeah. Well, they're routers. saying it's the blueprint to the county and they can't give them up. And that was, well, that was my next question. Because <clears throat> we have Ken Bennett who told me the other day, <clears throat> excuse me, that he can't, what, so to make everything clear for the people out there, you got a hold of the machines, you copied all the software, you handed back the machines. You looked at the software and you said, wait, there's a secondary set of passwords that we need to get in there to check the administrative logs. And also we need the logs, I think they're called maybe the slug logs from the router. So we can see if the internet was hooking up on that day. They're not giving it to you. are kind of playing this whole game, Katie Hobbs again. Are there going to be subpoenas out for these two items? Well, we have the lawyers. Well, all that stuff is already under subpoena. All that stuff is already under subpoena, but we're, uh, our lawyers are looking at trying to, you know, can, I have to salute Karen Fan. She's been trying to be, do this so diplomatically and be so, be so cooperative with these folks and try to get them to cooperate. But they're just so dug in on this. And everybody's saying, oh, this is the Republicans against the Democrats. No, actually, four out of the five county supervisors are Republicans. Yeah. So you yeah. know what? We will go after our own if they're corrupt. Yeah. yeah. And, and I won't be a party to any kind of party that's that's going to be any kind of any kind of corruption whatsoever. I, I'm done. I, I won't do that. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to fight like like crazy. We're going to get to the bottom of this. Our constituents are screaming for this. It's not Republican, de de Democrat, Independent, Green Party, Yellow Party. I don't give a darn. This is about election integrity. This is about making sure that your vote that's enshrined in the Constitution is going to be fair and free, that it's not going to be corrupted. Yeah. Uh, everything, going from mail-in ballots to everything. We want to make sure that no dead people voted. We want to make sure that there's 
200 people that are listed to vote, register to vote at the corner of walk and don't walk, and it's a vacant lot, we want to make sure that those are those are legitimate or not. Yeah, yeah. Let's face it. How does how does okay, but <laughs> just by the definition of somebody that's homeless, how do they declare residency? But they're allowed to vote here in, in Maricopa County. Yeah, yeah. I well, that's a whole other subject right there too as yeah. well. I I think it's more. You're going to find a lot of people who've been deceased and a lot of more people who moved. That's the two main areas I think that I would be looking for or whatnot, you know, when it comes to that, the particular people who aren't eligible to vote. Uh, and, but And also, there, it has been alleged that there's phantom voters, people that are just basically don't exist or, or you're right, there's, you know, dead people and so on and so forth, just phantom voters. There's been alleged that that's happened. Well, guess what? We need to disprove that. They're calling that's a conspiracy theory that dead people voted. Okay, well, let us disprove that yeah when well, oh, you have all these extra ballots anything's possible you know well, what i'm saying and, you know, there's also allegations that that uh, a flight came in from korea south korea and, and they came in with bundles and bundles of ballots and they were sent to directly to phoenix uh to the tabulation center center so basically they're counterfeit ballots let us disprove that yeah yeah if it's I, true let's yeah. find out if it's not then let us disprove that you yeah. know when when the police are investigating a crime scene the first thing they do is they try to eliminate fingerprints. They try to eliminate certain people so they can zero in on, 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 on a person of interest. So that's exactly what we're trying to let's eliminate any of these, these fingerprints that might be, if there's, if there is a crime that was committed, basically. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's what we want to do. We want to dispel all these so-called conspiracy theories. Well, there is no, I'm sorry, but what the, the proof is in the pudding right now, what is not a, a theory, a conspiracy theory right now, is the theory of a conspiracy because there is a conspiracy it's not a theory anymore because you got the county supervisors in bed with the democratic party in bed with the the democrats secretary of state fighting this tooth and nail has been calling voters in arizona a bunch of nazis because they 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 were supporting donald trump katie hobbs yeah Exactly, yeah. exactly. And that's yeah. exactly, that's the Democrat liberal sin. They shift the subject, ignore the facts, and name call. Well, this is that's one thing yet. we'll probably, you might disagree with me, uh, Senator, but I don't think it's just the Democrats. I think it's the establishment, and then Republicans are involved. And this thing could have never happened if a bunch of Republicans, a part of the establishment, didn't turn a blind eye and let it happen. And, and I tell this pe people all the time because, hey, as I loot, I tip my hat off for a lot of people that want to still sit there and try to reform the Republican Party. I ain't doing it on the Democratic side ever again. I'm done. I'm out. But, I mean, there are a lot of establishment Republicans, and I say this all the time, Lindsey Graham and Mitch McConnell are a lot closer to Joe Biden than they ever were to Donald Trump. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I totally agree with you. Yeah. yeah. I agree with you. Uh, Let's talk about the mail-in ballots, because we have a system over here whatnot, because you also mentioned something. So so the next step to get those other informations, of, first off, before we leave, when it comes to the password, and the slug logs for the routers to make sure we see if it was hooked up to the internet, which we've seen all across this country. These machines are hooked up to the internet. What's the next step to get that information? Well, uh, the lawyers are working with the county supervisors to get that stuff. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're working through that process. I, I really can't get into any kind of details, but we're not letting it go. That's for sure. Good, this, good. Actually, this actually puts more wind in our sails because we know we're way over the target. Yeah, this, yeah. this actually strengthens our resolve. Yeah. You know, we may not uh, have certain authority to do anything. We can't arrest anybody. We don't have prosecutional authority. We don't have, even though our, we get tons of emails telling we need to go arrest these people and throw them in jail. You know, I would love nothing more than to do, do that with some of them, but we don't have arresting authority. We can't go seize equipment. Uh, we do have some authority, you know, we, on the, over the elections, we can delegate the authority on the election, but the overall responsibility falls on the state legislature. Um, so we're trying to work through that process is uh yeah yes yeah. it's an important process. one so yeah we're probably most likely going to have to take them back to court yeah well if that's what you got to do you know we have the 22 month window in which that all, all that stuff is eligible once those 22 months go by boom, forget about it you also talked about the signatures on the ballots right okay because i asked ken bennett you guys Hang don't on. have the signatures on the ballot and i i always pay attention being a poker player hold on okay. hold on, hold on. Let me go back ahead up senator Right. The law says 22 months, but for Arizona, it's 24 months. But we have all that stuff in our possession. Yeah. Well, you don't have the... We're not going to turn anything over or back over to them until we're done. 
you don't have the envelopes with the signatures on it, right? Those are still at your company, Rumbeck. Rumbeck is the contractor that makes the ballots. And it's a little bit odd, too, as well, because when I talked to Ken Bennett, he says it's not really in the scope of Cyber Ninjas to check no, those we, signatures. The mail, the, the, the ballots, the, the, the envelopes themselves, the county recorder has those, the ones that were mailed in. Run, okay. Runbeck's a contractor that, that prints it out and sends it out. So the county already has the, the mail-in, the, the, the ballot envelopes. They have those. I, I heard they send them back to Runbeck, and Runbeck uses their machine to authenticate the signature and sends a digital sign signature over to Maricopa. No, they, uh, from what I understand, no, Runbeck, sent, they mail them all out. They mail them all out off the, the voting list that the, the counties give them to do the mail out. Yeah. Of course, if it comes in return mail. I don't know if it goes to the county or it goes to Runbeck. I know in my county, uh, mail-in ballots, if they don't, they're, they get returned, um, you know, by the by the post office, they go back to the county. Uh, so, but the yeah. signatures, that's that's what's on file. The the envelopes themselves, the county recorder has all those because they kept them at they keep them at the election. Okay, uh, okay. I I, I I think that uh, we all have to look into these these contracts when it comes to, because like you said, you mentioned something. People were like, well, how did they get a hold of all these extra ballots? I said, well, in 25 states, you got ballot harvesting. So now let's say, for instance, you mail out all the ballots, 80% of them hit the mark, 20% go back. A nefarious character can hand that over to somebody, and with ballot harvesting, I can go walk them in and just drop them off, fill them out any way I want to, and drop them off. So I think it's important that we look at all these mail-in systems across Arizona, across California, across the country, because these companies like Runbeck, like K&H, they're like Dominion. They Not only do they have proprietary software, they have proprietary ownership. So you don't yeah. even know who owns them because they're like a hedge fund of another hedge fund of a zombie company, and right. that's what's going on. So, well, and, and that goes back down to the, the ballot itself, too. Uh, we're, we're working on something to make sure that there's at least three or four countermeasures in the next election on a ballot, so it cannot be counterfeited. You can't just run it through a Xerox machine and, uh, you know, use any old paper. It's going to be, uh, the paper is going to be proprietary. And there's a few other countermeasures on a ballot that we have sample of that we're, uh, we're actually investigating to have for the next election. Yeah. So this way we know that it cannot be counterfeited. And you got basically it'd be done on uh, like a mint uh, or a currency type of paper, that type yeah. of technology of currency. Um the and, and with mail-in ballots all together, I, I I agree with you. I think the only ones that should be able to have a mail-in ballot or absentee ballot is the military, maybe a police officer, or or for that matter, a traveling nurse or a truck driver. And you mm -hmm. should have to apply for that. You have to give reason for that. Um, when we have three weeks of early voting in the primary and the general election, and then you have election day, uh, you know I I'm disgusted when we hear these people going, "Oh, you're taking away my right to vote via mail." When we have to spend millions, I mean millions of dollars in American blood and treasure to guarantee an Iraqi woman the right to vote and protect the Iraqi woman while she's standing in line to go vote for the very first time. And she just has to put ink on her finger to go and vote. And we risk blood and treasure. We've had troopers come back. We had service members being killed and maimed, protecting those voting election lines. We've spent all that American blood and treasure trying to help somebody else vote in another country, and we can't, and you don't want to stand in line yeah. to vote? Yeah. Yeah. The most precious thing you have? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, like I said. I go, I, go, I go to early voting. I go yeah, first yeah. day, early voting, I opens up, I go for early vote. Why? Because if I want to make sure if I get run over by a bus, at least I know my vote got counted. Yeah. Well. And, and, of course, there's no lines during early voting, so I go get it done, and you got three weeks to do it. I hear you. I, I think, though, get rid of these mail-in ballots. There's too much room for corruption. I and I agree, we, but yeah, I, I but we harvesting, but they, what they do is they find a way around that. Yeah, you you can always find a way around of his extra ballots. And I and I saw Representative Fincham's. Uh, he showed me some of the ballots, and I'm glad that we're on that that mindset. We got to make sure these ballots are secure. Twenty percent of that paper by federal law, I believe, has to be recyclable paper, uh, and you can smuggle them in uh, nowadays from Kinkos. You don't need to go to Southeast Asia or China, but the way the, the mainstream media and the local media, your local hero, Bram Resnick, or whatever his name is over there, uh, they keep muddying the waters and undermine this election by pointing out they're looking for bamboo. They're looking for bamboo. Uh, how do you counteract that kind of language? I mean, I think you said it perfectly there, but, but what do you do to push back against that? 
Well, once again, he, that's the liberal sin. They shift the subject, ignore the facts and name call. The reason why they're looking for something like that for bamboo paper is to, uh, to eliminate those fingerprints, right? Eliminate that the cons so-called conspiracy that ballots were flown in from another country because in, South, in Asia, Southeast Asia, they use bamboo pulp type paper. Yeah. We, we don't, we have a different type of paper product. So you, you want to eliminate that. So if there is paper that's bamboo, okay, that could be considered a counterfeit ballot. And we need to investigate that. So let's just go ahead and disprove these wild accusations that, you know, ballots are flown in from Korea. Yeah. So why is he shifting his subject, ignoring the facts and then name call by meaning, meaning name call that he's trying to make us all look like a bunch of kooks. No, that's called process of elimination. Yeah. We're, we're going through the process of making sure that every ballot that comes through, it's not counterfeited and that's a good thing. And why wouldn't he want to make sure that none of the, to prove that nothing would happen to, uh, this is what's amazing how these people are fighting so hard for us to make sure to try to prove that the supervisors and the secretary of state's office is correct. Yeah. Now they're calling this a fraud. It. So I let's know. just say for the sake of argument, they're calling this a fraud. It. So if we find out that this thing is totally legit, there was nothing stolen. Are they still going to say it's a fraud? Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I hear you. Uh, it, but that is like one of the things, like I got to be honest with you, watching all the hearings and seeing everything going on, and this used to be a small progressive kind of issue, election integrity. There was a bunch of us fighting this for this a long time. There were little small pockets of conservative groups out there and stuff like that. But even when I talked to our other paisan, Garland Favorito, he was saying it's just so crazy nowadays. We live in a cartoon. Everything is spun because in this general election, now we have a lot of people, uh, you know, right-wing populists that have come forth and now are like learning elections. And I saw the summit the other day they had on Sunday, uh, and I tell I tell people I said the conservatives are kicking your liberals' butts here because they're educating people on elections and getting them involved, and I think that's great. Um, but let me ask you another question: part of the work plan, okay, is it to look at the poll books? Because I didn't ask this question when I went out there. I got a lot of questions with Bennett and Brakey and everybody involved. Is there plans? Is a part of the work plan to do a forensic examination? on the poll books to make sure they're legit? Uh, I cannot discuss any kind of the details that they're working on, because like I said, you have certain people that are doing French fries, certain yeah. people doing apple pies, and, and I don't want to get into that scope. Okay. Work because okay. Uh, that's, that's their thing. And it's, you know, it's, uh, I don't want to get into that, that way. So, you know, my, my okay. job is to just dispel all the BS that's being thrown out there by the BOS, the County Sheriff, and, and even the Democratic Party. It's, it's just amazing that the, the lies that are being perpetrated, they're actually perpetrating the big lie. Uh, and, and they're actually showing that we're over the target because they're fighting this too hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, here's another question, because this, this is a serious one. Uh, and I, I think this is one part where a lot of people have missed on their language and the ideology. You hear a lot of talk about Dominion. You hear a lot of talk about ESNS. But isn't, uh, Senator, isn't the real problem the proprietary software, because all the tabulation machines and all the four major companies across the country, they have these features in there and they have proprietary software. Isn't it better to acknowledge the fact that it's not Dominion, it's the actual black box counting software proprietary, which is secret, and maybe either scratch that and go to an open source system, or are you an advocate for just hand counting? I'm over an ad advocate for hand counting. Look how much this election, this this investigation is costing, and all the delays and all the heartache. I think if we go right back down to the original way of doing a hand count, we would have been we would be a hell of a lot better off because anything could be any kind of electronic equipment can be hacked. It can be manipulated. Uh, the Democrats were screaming and yelling at that uh, years ago about Dominion. Oh yeah, and all of a sudden now they're all on board. What was it uh, Amy Klobuchar and even Bernie and Warren? Else. They were screaming and yelling about this years ago about Dominion. But now all of a sudden, oh, no, 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 Dominion is perfect. Oh, okay, you know, whatever. I'm going to watch my language here. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can, I know, trust me, we, we pointed that out all the time and stuff. But wouldn't a good compromise, if you have to go with tabulation machines, maybe go to open source with some blockchain? I don't know if you guys are into that yet. I know Representative Fincham said he's a little scared of anything technology-wise, but you know, being a, a a little bit younger and whatnot, I'm into cryptocurrency. I understand how it works, and I'm an advocate for getting. Hey, let's have an open source system here that counts the that tabulates our votes. 
Would that be a good compromise? Would you at least consider that? Well, I don't know. Uh, that's one of those things you got to look at and you have to examine. I think it's going to, these, these things have to be examined with a hell of a lot more scrutiny that's gone in the past. Uh, I, I believe that there should be a, a moratorium at least for two election cycles on any kind of electronic tabulating equipment. I think these ballots should be uh, counted at the precinct level. Yeah. Uh, and then that way there's, you've got precinct levels voting on it. You've got both parties there witnessing it. And then you, you, you do it. I mean, that's kind of like the way they did it in the past. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, yeah. Maricopa County is a big county and, you know, they want to consolidate. Of course, when you consolidate elections, that's what's scary about HR1. You know, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's not, it's not who votes, who counts the votes. And that's what Stalin said. Yep. yep and, yep. Uh, you know, and I look, either party, either party should should not have a, a monopoly on, on this and that much control. Yeah. Like yeah. I said, if the Republicans were in it, like, you know, were, were cheating, I'd be gone. I'd be gone. I won't be part of it. I won't. Yeah, I'm but, glad. Uh, right now we have four Republican supervisors that are obstructing and and uh, resisting and uh, acting like Democrats. So uh -huh. I have no sympathy for them if they uh, if they get recalled or they don't get reelected. Yeah, yeah. There's a real there's a whole recall measure going on there. So I I really didn't even get a chance to get into that. Well, all right. So we talked about the poker game, the way they broke the system in the beginning, right? That's what they did. They set it up, kind of swing it over to mail in balloting. Are you down for same day registration and maybe a holiday to go vote? Well, there is a holiday to go vote. It's called election day. Um, is it a national I, I holiday? Believe... Can you make it a state holiday in Arizona? Well, why not? Why yeah. not? Yeah. I mean, everybody just close down for the day, go down there and vote. I mean, I, absolutely. Why not? Uh, but uh, um, getting back to same day registration, I'm against that. That needs to be vetted. We need to make sure that you're actually a legitimate citizen and they call us racist and all that kind of stuff for that kind of that thing. But what what really is racist about that comment is the race is uh, is the person that making that comment is technically being a racist. I don't want anybody coming from Canada, coming to Lake Havasu City, voting in my city, gotcha. at city elections, even though they own a house. Yeah. So I mean, come on, it's about integrity. We don't want people coming in from other countries that they're not residents, they're not citizens. And voting here. I mean, it's just not fair. It, it undermines the citizens' rights. Okay. And it's the citizens' rights first. Yeah. What about this, uh, the funding, the funding mechanism? Because you hear reports out there that it's privately funded. You hear reports that it's wasting taxpayer dollar. Uh, how is this uh, funded, this audit? Well, the Senate's paying for the, it's coming out of the Senate budget uh, for the audit itself, the, 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 the companies that are doing the audit. Now, there has been extra costs, like we had to move it to a coliseum. We have to rent the facilities. And now we have to rent and we have to, we have to get a lot more security than, than we would have needed if we would have done everything at the county level. Uh, so we have to have a lot of security, which we do. Um, and there's security that people just don't see, which is a good thing. But uh, we have 20, I mean, we, we're talking about all the cameras and everything else, 24 hour surveillance cameras on the ballots and, and that kind of stuff. So we have all these extra costs. And now we have legal costs. So, and I'm, there's probably a fund out there that's, that's, that's helping fund the legal defense. I'm yeah. not sure. You can't quote me on that, but, uh, you know, I, I yeah. don't know for sure. Well, what's your position the to, to we're putting the contractors on the Senate budget? What's your position to say that it's, it's okay to be funded? What's your statement to say it's okay to be funded by the Senate when people go, Oh, it's a waste of taxpayer dollar. They already had several audits, which is BS and stuff like that. But what's your statement to that when they complain that they shouldn't be taking taxpayer dollar money to, to fund this audit. If it costs us, let's just say $5 million of taxpayer money to prove that it was a legitimate election, would it be a waste of taxpayer money? The answer is no. Yeah. It, would, it, would, it would not. It would not be a waste. Yeah. No matter what it costs. That's so why I had to tell some of my colleagues, we need to go down and we need to investigate this. This is a win-win situation. People have no confidence in the election system. If we get into this, we find out the election was legit, then we've, we've, we've done our job and we've proved to our citizen. And if we find anomalies, things that need to be fixed, then we fix it. If we find out that this thing is a complete disaster, we need to fix that. Bottom line is we did our job. Win, lose, or draw. We did our job. That's what we're supposed to. You're not supposed to lick your fingers, stick it in the air, and see which way the wind is blowing. You're supposed to be able to react and 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 uh, respond to the to the concerns of the citizens. 
and the right to vote is is the utmost concern and and should be maintained and preserved that i'm sorry there's no compromise in that yeah i hear you and i agree you know uh you can't tell me anything different to to spend money on an audit we spend money all the world with aid and everything we have such waste of money you know what i'm saying forget about it i i put everything up to to get an audit like that it's amazing um, well, what's really amazing is the ludicrous claims that comes out of the secretary of state's office and the suit and, and the supervisors there's no fraud here there didn't this didn't happen that didn't happen I'm, wait a minute we have unemployment fraud we have medicare fraud medicaid fraud we have all this fraud that goes on you know we're talking stimulus checks being mailed out to people that don't exist they're a fraud. So all of a sudden, but the election's pristine. Yeah. You know, you know, forget about it. You know, I mean, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like it's amazing. I, I, it's, I just, I tell them, put the bong down for about 30 days and think this through. I mean, so. <laughs> Did you say put the bong down for 30 days? Put the bong down for about 30 days, lay off the hippie hay for about 30 nah. days. And think this through because if we have all this other kind of fraud, yeah. then you can't tell me that there's no that there's no possibility yeah. of an election. First of all, Senator, that that helps me think. That's why I'm an advocate for that. But let's keep that aside. Um, <laughs> you you sir, Adrian Fontes, right? The ex uh, recorder. He goes on TV with his good friend Bram, and they actually compare the people trying to do this audit to the people who were at the Capitol in January sixth. Uh, in one situation, they got this guy, Anthony Kern, out there now, and they've been making a whole big fuss about that. What's your opinion about the Anthony Kern situation, the fact that he's one of the uh, counters there, and he was also at the Capitol on January 6th? Okay, isn't the Capitol the people's house? Um, and you know what? The more and more that these uh, investigations prove that these were not Trump supporters that breached the Capitol. These were Antifa, BLM. Uh, that faction there that breached the Capitol. Now, Anthony Kern is a former legislator. He's a private citizen. Uh, Ken Bennett's a former legislator, former Secretary of State, private citizen. Um, and, and by the way, he did not get reelected. So they, they did not have him counting his election. But, uh, you know, he, he's, he's, he's no longer there anymore. So he, he you know, saw that these people were trying to make a story out of him and he courageously and with, with all honor and respect said, you know, I'm going to bow out because this bigger picture is more important. Uh, I was volunteering to help out and, and, and do my duty. Uh, and I don't see no fault with that. He yeah. was not part of this so-called insurrection and all this other garbage that they're, they're claiming. Once again, they're, they're, they're accusing him of a capital crime which in itself is slanderous and he should sue these people. But um, he was nowhere near that, the breach of the Capitol. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. No, he, he uh, there is no picture of him going inside. We were actually there. We were on the steps. We could talk more about that too as well. Uh, I did think we see some evidence of some people going in, but I don't want to get on that yet. I want to talk about that. I don't call it an insurrection at all. And we've covered a lot of protests, all the different protests around here. Uh, but we'll talk about that on another debate day. I was but I in just, the Marines for 20 years. I know what those things look like. Yeah, I know, right. <laughs> I mean, that was uh, that was more like vandalism by a couple people who got out of control. That wasn't an insurrection. Uh, but let's stay on Katie Hobbs for a second. She says the audit is a sham. And now the Brennan Center has contacted Biden's DOJ to look into this audit, to believe this or not, go hold on to your head over here. There's a lack of security. Now, all of a sudden, the Democrats care about security, the chain of custody. What are your thoughts on these accusations over here? Uh, very, extremely fantastic that they've literally gone completely out. Like I said, put the bong down because they letter that the stuff that they, I, I read that letter from the DOJ and everything they referenced in there, the references that they use as their proof source was every left leaning rag newspaper in Phoenix. They said there was they breached the building and there was no security there uh, when they the reporters went in there. So that basically they admitted that they basically trespassed. Anyway, they went into the building when there was no machines there. There were no ballots there. They went in there during the setup time uh, before anything was really set up. So that's another that's another distraction and, and uh, invented news. So they're using that as a, a proof source, which is laughable. 
Um, there is 24 hour security. We have cameras, armed security on the ballots. The chain of custody was when they delivered them. There's more chain of custody security on the ballots now yeah. than when the county supervisor decided to load everything up on a truck and they were going to deliver it and drop it on our doorstep. Mind you, like I said, they're the ones that caused this to go off site from the county and dump it on our doorstep and then push it to the county, uh, uh, or the, excuse me, not the county, but the, the Veterans Coliseum. The Coliseum, yeah. And so they're the ones that caused that. We have security on it. We have a chain of custody. We have a chain of custody. When a pallet came off, they checked off the inventory list and they had cameras on it going from the truck to a cage. Same thing with the equipment, all that stuff. I was there when they were doing the delivery just to observe and watch. This way I could dispel all the BS that's being thrown out, out there. Now, the other thing I noticed on the, on the thing from the DOJ is they're threatening uh, the people that are going out canvassing and knocking on doors and they're calling that voter intimidation. And they're quoting certain federal statutes of voter intimidation. Voter intimidation is trying to prevent somebody from voting or intimidating them to vote. But knocking on the door saying, hi, is Mr. Johnson live here? Uh, no. What about Mr. Smith? No. Mr. Robinson? No. Stevens? No. None of these people live here at this address? No. Why? Well, how long have you lived at the address here? I've been here 20 years. You don't know any of these people? No. But did they get, here's the problem. They were registered to vote at this address. Oh, well, maybe that explains for the uh, these ballots that I got for them. Or they didn't get any ballots. I mean, this kind of thing. So did you get a ballot in their name? No. Okay, well, thank you very much. Have a nice day. Isn't that called like a survey? Yeah, yeah. Are those poll questions? I know before elections, we get phone calls. Hi, did you vote in the last uh, th two elections? Did you, are you registered Republican, Democrat, Independent? Uh, how did you vote? What's your age group? What's your gender? All kinds of stuff. Those are poll questions. But knocking on the door to say, does Mr. Johnson live here um, to find out if it's he's a ghost or is he dead? Is he live there? Is he legit? I mean, there's people that live. There's there's 20 people registered to to vote at one address. Yeah, we should be able to go on canvas to make sure that that's legit or not. I think What's you answered my earlier question about the registration polls without answering it. Thank you. Um, is this election Senator Sonny Borelli straight up? Is this election about bringing back Trump or is there something more to it? And finally, will you accept the results of the audit, even if it comes back and says that Joe Biden won the election? Yeah, absolutely. Well, one, 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 wait a minute, which question? Do well, I, would I accept the results? Yes, of course. Yeah. Because we're going to follow the evidence when the evidence takes us. This is not about overturning an election. This is either proving or disproving that the election was was done bad. And if it is done bad, we need to fix what's broken. So if something's broken, that's what we're here to. That's what we're here to do. That's what the voters wanted us to do. They elected us to come and represent them. And one of the things they want to make sure is that their their ballot, their right to vote, is sacred and it's going to be protected. And I'm going to protect it with everything, every particle of my being. Uh, I was in the Marines for 20 years, and surrender is not in my creed. When I ventured down this this uh, this road back in November, we 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 knew something was, wasn't right because something happened in 2018 did the same thing. Cause I remember I said in 16, something is not right here. Yeah. We're being set up for something. And then 18 hit and we got Kirsten Sinema as the Senator. And we're like, wait a minute. And we got Katie Hobbs as the secretary of state. And we got Katie Hoffman as a, as you know, Democrat that runs the uh, superintendent of schools. Like something's not right here. You know, we know that people dropped off uh, ballots, handfuls of ballots and dropped them off on election day because there were door hangers out uh, for Senator Cinema, saying no ID required, no stand in line, just take your ballots to the head of the line and just drop them in the box at a polling center. Yeah. Well, that's how you ballot harvest. Yeah. Okay, you're not picking up a whole bunch of box of them. You're dropping them off three or four at a time, and you're doing it that way. I said something's fishy here. We're being set up. So we're being set up. We, we blew the whistle back then, but we all got shouted down by the mainstream media. And then, of course, I said we're being set up for 2020. We better be prepared here. Or something's not right. Oh, now, Sonny, you people in Mojave County got the tinfoil hats. Huh. You know, you're crazy. Okay, you'll see. And then what happened? So then we have everybody else freaking out over this. Well, um, our job is to protect the ballots. So we need to do this once and for all. We need to make sure that everybody has a restore confidence in the election system. 
that's the main goal. Restoring confidence. If we find something wrong, we need to fix it. Yeah. We're supposed to be problem solvers, and let's solve the problem. If you guys can't handle that, then go home. Yeah, yeah. Senator Sonny, uh, our engineer, Johnny Tsunami, has a question for you. Hey, Senator. Uh, quick question. So earlier you were talking about the um, when the county took the tabulation machines – uh, or uh, when the county sent over the tabulation machines, they sent them over to the Coliseum, correct? Correct. So, so you're telling me that they, uh, and you, you mentioned that they uh, disconnected everything, disconnected the routers, and <laughs> that's not that's why would they even move them at all? Is my question because that completely, you know, changes everything from election day, you know, election night. Correct. That's why we wanted to inspect the machines at the original state that they were in when they did their so-called inspection. We wanted to check it in the same type of environment, secure environment on election day when they did their uh, accurate, their logistics accuracy test. We wanted to do it in the same type of setting, but they chose to move it away and get it out of there. They disconnected the routers, replaced the routers. And, uh, you know, so button box them up and they were supposed to deliver them to us. Now, here's something one of the supervisors had said that um, moving the, let me see if I can pull this up because it's extremely uh, funny and comical because they're, they're literally contradicting themselves on this. Wasn't that uh, Fontes who said that? It was. Uh... Um, actually, it was the, the county, the, um, one of the county supervisors sellers basically said that if they, the reason why they can't give us the, uh, where's it at the routers <laughs> the routers it, is because it's actually, i have a tweet about it they see yeah, it was it was a blueprint to the county and it would put law enforcement in danger if they did so right. additional concerns you know let me maybe pull this up here i think it's just hilarious concerns that we have learned that providing physical routers will cripple the county operations and cost as much as six billion dollars if we must replace the routers while <laughs> the cyber ninjas have them well, they've already told us they've disconnected the routers and they they replaced them all and have new ones. So why would you do that in the first place? Because you're hiding something. You already have new routers. You don't need the old routers. Yeah. Yeah. So it's garbage. Yeah. yeah. So I only ask because I don't think uh, some people might not understand that that's a huge deal that they – because it leaves room for tampering, basically. When you move the when you move the tabulation machines, uh, there's a case right now in in uh, Los Angeles, uh, Raji Rob, who's uh, who has requested inspection of the tabulation machines, and he requested it to be in exactly the same election night mode because otherwise, there, there's room for tampering there. Yeah, yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. And Thank if you. they're having tampering, then they're violating federal law. Yeah. Because everything's supposed to be pristine, unharmed, un unmolested for 24 months. Yeah. And the administrative logs will show a lot of stuff what's going on. You get the administrative logs, we can see who was going in, who was going out, what they were doing. So if they're not giving over those passwords to get that, they're 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 plain and simple, they're obstructing justice is what they're doing. And so there's no conspiracy theory, there is there is actually there's no theory, there is a conspiracy to to what? Uh cover up. To cover up. Yeah. And they don't want the router logs out there cuz that would also tell us if the internet was talking to the tabulation machines on election night. So I'm glad you're on the case, uh, Senator. We finished up here. We're just going to do a quick lightning round. Uh, f I'm going to give you like uh, five questions, a little follow-up to each one. So you got to do a quick and fast over here. We're going to have a little fun here, Paisan. You ready? Far away. Here we go. Pizza, thin sliced or Sicilian? Oh, it depends on the day. <laughs> what do you like on your pie? Uh, I like you know, Italian sausage, black olives, and, and pepperoni. And uh, sometimes um, some... Uh, 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 anchovy? No, 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 no. <laughs> no leech? No anchovy. No, no pineapple. No, no. That's a, some sometimes uh, some uh, uh, gabagol and um, and brzeut. Brzeut. Yeah. Ah, you got the good stuff. All right. Correct terminology. Sunday sauce or Sunday gravy? Sauce. Ah, sauce. What's your favorite pasta with that sauce? Um, I like it rigatoni. I like uh. I like, I like linguine. I don't like the linguine and clam sauce, but I like the, I like linguine. But my favorite, most my mother just always made was in Yankee or uh, uh, Monagot. Yeah. 
Ah, nice. Okay. Favorite Italian movie not named The Godfather? <laughs> well, that'd have to be uh, Goodfellas, yeah. Goodfellas. Who's your favorite character and his favorite line? You trying to be funny? <laughs> like, funny little, little Joe Pesci? You make, what am I, a clown? Okay. Actually, what? you know what? A Bronx Tale was actually brilliant. I loved, I loved A Bronx Tale. Yeah, but I know you're at ends. Me and you, we're at ends right now with Robert De Niro. He's become, forget about it. So it, it, that's yeah. why that question was so hard, because the old movies we love, you're like, ah, this guy again. He was so, yeah. he was our guy, and now he's, ah, uh, forget about it. What does this Italian word mean? Stunad. Stunad I means stupid. <laughs> Use it in what a sentence, please. What about the other one? What's the other one? The one that De Niro's becoming. <laughs> Stugats. <laughs> Stug Stugats. Okay. Well, here's my last question. <laughs> Which one of these Italian words would you say best describes the 2020 general election? A. Shangad. B. Afugesi. C. Disgraziad. Or D. Ugats. And E. If you have a word of your own, I'll let you fill in the blank. Oh God, yeah, it's the Fugazi, it's Ugats. It's it's like, it's garbage. It's garbage. Yeah. It's, gar it's disgraceful. Yeah. Senator, thank you for joining us here today. I really do appreciate it. I had a lot of fun. I feel like I got a new paisan. I want to have you back on. I want to talk about things we disagree on. Uh, me being a leftist, a, a practical leftist. I say a common sense leftist. And when the common sense left and the common sense right get together. We can accomplish a lot of things. So well, you know, when we spoke off camera, you know, you you, you actually have you're more of a Republican than, than you are uh, a lefty commie. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that because I want to talk about that one day. But today we did a, a long show. We talked on elections. I, I appreciate you coming here, Senator. Yeah. I'll probably be out there in a couple weeks to follow the the election. Maybe I'll make my way to Lake Havasu if you're not by the uh, state capitol fighting for election integrity. I appreciate you coming on. Improve your net and hire a vet. Thank you very much. God bless. You got it, sir. Convo out, everybody. We'll see you later.